Hello and welcome everybody. Today I will be giving my thoughts about the clan mech pack. Well, it's not really a mech clan mech pack because you can actually buy these all individually. So basically what's going on is that we are having hero mechs for our wave 1 mechs. Wave 1 clan mechs which would be the Kit Fox, the Adder, the Nova, Storm Crow, Summoner, Timberwolf, Warhawk and Direwolf. Now, I'm just gonna give my thoughts about what I think about these mech, uh, these hero mechs and whether they are worth purchasing or not. I personally think that we shouldn't give PGI any more money right now because like they don't exactly deserve it. But putting that aside, your money is your own, how you want to spend it is up to you and I'm here to help you decide whether it's worth investing your money into this new hero max or whether you're better off spending it on something else. So the hero max have their own paint scheme, they have their own affiliation with their unit who is the pilot. I think these are all law based builds, I'm not too sure, uh, correct me if I'm wrong down in, down in the comment section below. And um, let's just get straight to it, let's start with the light max first. Now the only thing we're really interested about is the hard points, because it's Omnimax. And Omnimax, that means that you can swap out the hard points, mix and match, min, uh, min max it. So here we have the Kit Fox, which has one ballistic in each arm and 2 energy in each torso. Now that is a very compelling offer already. For 10 bucks, you're already getting 2 really good Omniports on the Kit Fox. Now what does, it, what does this mean? That means that you can run the triple AMS Kit Fox, this is my way of thinking, um, triple AMS Kit Fox with 5 ER smalls or 6 if you can afford the heat. I'm not too sure whether you can though. But you can run like 5 ER smalls, triple AMS and ECM. And you will be a very good support mech and, but you would be able to defend yourself because previously you'd only be able to do like 3 mediums or 3 medium pulse and that was way too hot for the Kit Fox to handle especially since it doesn't have I think it only has 7 true double heat sinks and not 10 so that's why a lot of the builds on the Kit Fox are really really heat inefficient so I would give the Kit Fox a thumbs up in this case but once again it has the same po it has the problem of, of being a Kit Fox it can only do so much so next we have the adder which has one energy in each arm which is nothing new we already have that with the adder prime energy in ct standard and one ballistic in each side torso now that is totally not worth it at all reason being if it was like a 50 tonner 55 tonner i would say hey you know what dual ballistic one each one in each side torso isn't so bad but here's the plot here's the problem it's a 35 tonner the most you can do with dual ballistics is basically two UAC twos. That's about it. So, yeah, and I don't think you can mount anything large. I don't think you can mount a UAC ten. Correct me. No wait. I think you can mount a UAC ten in the side torso, but that's about it. So, is it worth it? No, because the adder adder is actually not that bad of a mech. It can carry a fair bit. It's a glass cannon. It's basically a glass cannon. It's what it is. But the main problem with it is that it does not have more than one hard point per component. That's its main problem. That's the problem I've always had with the adder. It's still a decent mech. But whether you should buy this hero mech, which is called the um, I think it's called the Cinder. I'm I'm not caring about the names. It's Adder Kit Fox. You guys know what it is. So totally not worth buying the Cinder at all, which is the adder, the hero adder. Nothing, nothing. It not offers really nothing at all. Now moving on to the medium max, we have um, the Nova, which two missile in the arm. Okay, two energy in the left torso. Mm -hmm. Okay, and two ballistics in the right torso. We already have that with the Nova S, and three energy in the right arm. Now depending on what quirks they put on these Omniports. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, that's probably a good thing to mention potential quirks on the omnipods. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how PGI does it. Since these are paid mechs, they probably over quirk it for like the first few days or something. I I don't know. This is just my my experience with PGI. Like a lot of mechs on release, especially clan, are so powerful and then they have to wait like three weeks before they actually nerf it. Well done PGI. So the most compelling thing that this Hero Mech has to offer is the two energy hard points. I'm going to zoom in here so you guys can see it a lot easier. The two energy hard points in the left torso. Now, I'd be more excited if it was two energy hard points on the right torso, considering that most of the mechs in the game nowadays are built to be asymmetric in favor of the right side. 
with your weapon set on the right and your dead set on the left because of all the whole Nasta shenanigans. It's not a bad option, I mean, the torso mounts are fairly close to the top bit. They're like, here's your top bit, here's your mounts. It's not that low. You can make good use of it, but it's up to you at the end of the day whether you think it's worth it or not. I personally think that it is not worth your money. The two missile in the arm, no. Do not. The Nova can only do two, two things. Well, two things, two things, two things. It can only do laser bolting and PPC pop tarting. That's the only two things that the Nova can do well, and it excels in them. Every other role you try to give it, it will perform miserably in it. Absolutely abysmal. So, forget about this Omnipod. It offers nothing compelling. Now, onward to the Stormcrow. We have one ballistic in each arm, with the right arm having an extra energy hard point, um, one energy in the right torso, and double AMS. Now, I know what you're thinking, double AMS is not a selling point. With how useless AMS is in the current state of the game, even with a whole bunch of LRMs, you get no rewards for running AMS, you lose out on heat sinks and potential uh, miscellaneous equipment if you were to put AMS, and it reveals your position. If you have it on, if like people can just randomly fire LRMs and then your AMS goes woo 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 and then people can see where you are. So not a compelling option. The most compelling option is basically the right arm, which has one ballistic, one energy. So what you can do is um four medium lasers, four ER mediums, and one gauss, everything towards the right side, with your only weapon on the left side being one ER medium. So that means you can still turn a peak fairly well. Is it worth the, I think it's 15 yeah, is it worth the $15 at the end of the day? No. You're only paying for one hard point that doesn't really exactly offer anything special. And yeah, no, dual AMS, uh-uh. So moving on to the heavies, we have the summoner which has two ballistics in the left arm, which is interesting, but it's not really all that useful considering that the summoner doesn't really, add, doesn't really have the omnipod, the omnipod space, the tonnage to run dual ballistics well, besides double UAC-5s and double UAC-2s. If it could run double UAC-10s, but you'd be low on ammo, and you'd constantly run out, and you'd be useless really quick. So, the ballistic left arm, useless, because we already have a ballistic- I think we already have a ballistic left arm in the game, don't we? Yeah, we already do, so this doesn't offer us anything special. The most intriguing thing is the left torso energy mount, which is really good. The PPC pop tart is a very powerful mech at the moment, with all its quirks, its agility, its heat generation, its velocity, very powerful mech. The only problem is that you have to mount your PPCs on the arms, which means that your arms get blown off, bye bye. Also they hit the dirt, all the time. So having one PPC in the left torso isn't such a bad thing, but there is a bit of a problem. With the loyalty summoner coming out, I think one, I'm not sure the criteria to qualify for the loyalty summoners. But with the loyalty summoners coming out, this thing is pretty much redundant. Because the loyalty summoners, uh, one has an an energy hard point on the left torso, and the other one has an energy hard point on the right torso. So this hero mech isn't offering us anything special. So is it worth it? No. Alright, so now we have the Timbo on the right. Yeah, it has a pretty sick paint scheme, I'll give it that. But ballistic left arm. No. Just no. And like, it really doesn't offer us anything at all besides the ballistic left arm. I mean you get one energy in each side torso now, that means that you can do laser vomit with the Timbo of SCT and has symmetric two mediums, one large pulse on each side of your mech. And you can have like one extra ton for maybe a targeting computer or a heatsink. But the Timbo doesn't offer anything at all besides it being a hero mech for the hero mech bonus. So unless you just want the hero mech bonus, the Timbo is not worth it at all. In fact, it is a complete waste of money for you to get because it does not provide anything intriguing, it does not have anything meta changing, it doesn't even have anything to offer that is different than from what the current uh, Timbo Omnipods already offer. Now, the assaults however, now I am really interested in the assaults. We have the Warhawk over here, which has two ballistics in the right arm, which means you can mount double UAC, which is actually part of its stock loadout. Double UAC 10 in the right arm, three energy in the left arm, which 
the most that you can have on the left arm currently is 2. So now you can have the Warhawk B right arm which has 3, and the Warhawk Hero left arm which has 3, so you can have a total of 7 energy hard points. Which is really good. Uh, the, uh, but I'm not sure how you're gonna make the laser boarding work in the Warhawk. I'll let your imagination one one round with that. Wow, I cannot English today. But it's a compelling offer. So, excuse me, um, burping. The Ballistic Right Arm, so what you can do with it is that you can have Ballistic Right Arm with double UAC 10, one right arm on the right arm, two SM6 on the right torso, and an SM6 in the CT, all with Artemis. Now the problem here is that it's a good build, it packs a punch, it's a good brawler, it has a dead side, but where do you put the ammo? Because all of your weapons on the right side, you want to put all of your ammo in this right the right side. Which only has so many slots, that's the problem. You can't put it in the left arm because if you lose that side, you lose your ammo. You lose your you can't even put it in the left torso because it's filled with heat sinks. You can't put it in the legs because it's filled with heat sinks. That's the problem with the Warhawk. It has the potential to have a really good brawler build, but because of its slot limitations and its locked equipment, it is uh, I mean we'll see how people make it work. Uh the imagination of the Mac Oil community is really interesting to say the least and now we have the dire wolf which is absolutely hilarious two ballistics in each arm two energy in each torso and who cares about the missile ct oh dear fucking christ i can see it already fucking oh and of them dire wolves Oh my god i can see it already please don't fucking put lrms in the dire wolf Actually you can, 6 ER mediums, dual gods and 2 LRM 10s is perfectly fine. But otherwise, no. You're making your torso bigger, and you're being a waste of tonnage by being an LRM direwolf. If you want to run LRMs, do it in an awesome or a stalker. They, they do it a lot better, or battle master. Don't do it in an atlas, don't do it in a Kodiak, don't do it in anything heavier than a stalker. Because you are dead weight otherwise. So, Two ballistics in each arm. So what does that mean exactly? Eight UAC twos, eight LB twos, eight Ultra fives. It's possible. I mean, the dire stuff exists. So whether you be able to f squeeze in eight UAC fives, I don't know. I will, I'll leave that up to you. Whether you be able to squeeze it, I haven't done the math for it, but you may be able to squeeze it. Uh, squeeze it in. I can already hear the people screaming that eight UAC fives is gonna be OP. Here's the thing, my good sir. If it is able to mount 8 UAC 5s, it will only have probably at most less than 8 tons of ammo. I'm being op optimistic here with the uh, ammo count, but it probably cannot mount more than 8 tons of ammo. Means it is not sustainable in the least with all those UACs. It's gonna be hilarious, but it's not sustainable. And the energies in energy hard points in each side torso. Basically, you can mount PPC doors all in the torso. So you have your PPCs in the torso. No, wait. No, you can't. Never mind. Um, forget what I said. But now you can have high high energy mounts without needing to use the Diowulf S side torso and giving up two tons for a hardlock jump jet. So it's a very compelling offer, but it's a Diowulf, which has been pretty much invalidated by the Todiak and can't really do anything that the Todiak can do better. So thanks PGI for invalidating the Diowulf. Please buff it. Give it more agility, give it more torso your range, I don't care. Make it a compelling offer versus the Kodiak. Now this is just a mini rant of mine, but yeah, I like Diawos more than I like Kodiaks. But yeah, it need Diawos need a buff. They are they have been power trapped into Ah shit, what's the word? Uselessness. Well use uh, obsolete. It's obsolete now, more or less. So here's the pricing for all of the uh, Hero Clan mechs. Basically, what this gets you is a Hero mech plus the accompanying mech bay. So you don't need to buy a new mech bay if you were to buy one of these. So you buy a Kit Fox, you get the Kit Fox and the mech bay. You want to buy the Warhawk, you get the Warhawk and the mech bay for the price that is stated here. So I thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you like to see more of this kind of content, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe and press the like button. And please do excuse my... um. <laughs> my inability to English at the moment because 
I'm not used to this live commentary shot sort of shenanigans. Even though I've done it for Noble Works for like the last 30 episodes of Noble Works, I'm still quite bad at live commentary. It's, it's gonna take some time, but I hope you all will uh, support me in doing so. So in any case, I hope to see you all again. Mata ashtane, bye bye. I am a weeb, I'm totally doing that at the end of every live commentary from now on. Mata ne, bye bye.